Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to think about how many steps are necessary to solve a particular equation. The equation that we're dealing with is here, 2x plus 5 over 3 is equal to 4 plus x over 5. And the question is, what is the fewest steps do you think we need to take to solve this equation? Now, there's a couple of different ways you can count steps, and uh, you can kind of count the steps, and you know, you can kind of, there's steps and there's sub steps to this. But what I really kind of want you to think about in this particular uh, problem is the main steps, right? Kind of like the main uh, components of the solution, right? Like what's your what's your first thing you're thinking about? What's the second thing you're thinking about? Then, like, what's the third or fourth or fifth thing that you're thinking about? So, kind of um, think you know, organize uh, this, your steps, if you will, you know, in a big picture way. Don't You don't have to count every single tiny little thing that you're doing. But if you happen to uh, count uh, in that way, that's fine as well. There's not going to be any one exact right answer, but uh, certainly, well, there is a, a, a one exact solution. Okay, but I'm talking about how many steps you need to take to solve this. What I uh, want you to really kind of be thinking about here is what's the most efficient approach to solve this problem. Maybe that's a better way to kind of, um, you know, capture the essence of what I want to talk about in this video. But uh, go ahead and uh, solve this equation if you know how to do that. Put your answer into the comment section and then tell me how many kind of main steps uh, took you to solve this equation. Again, there's not any one specific approach to solve this. Of course, um, there will be one right answer. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so what is the whole purpose of doing a problem like this? Well, the whole purpose, um, at least my intent here, is to get you to think about you know, solving math problems efficiently. Okay, there's always, uh, you know, um, different ways you can approach math problems. But some, you know, if you just start working right off the bat, oftentimes you can take a real long and arduous um, route to get the solution. Okay, and that can really work against you, especially if you're taking a test or exam where you only have a limited amount of time to do math. Right, so that's kind of the main idea here. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. So 2x plus 5 over 3 is equal to 4 plus x over 5. What is x equal to? Well, x is equal to 5, right? So there's uh, this is an absolute in terms of this particular problem. There's only one solution. And I'm going to say that uh, for myself, I'm going to um, uh, kind of classify my steps as three main steps, right? So it took me three main steps to solve this uh, equation. Now, if you have three main steps as well, that's excellent. But, you know, it could be that your steps are different than mine. You know what? As long as you got the right answer, that's really what counts. But I, you know, I've been doing math uh, for decades, been teaching math for decades and doing math for even longer. And again, through experience, you learn the most efficient routes. And that is important. All right. So anyways, if you got this solution, X is equal to five, that's certainly cause for celebration. Let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. You can tell your friends and family that indeed you know how to solve uh, basic algebraic equations, right? So the equation that we are dealing with is something that you would uh, learn how to solve like in a first year algebra course. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now, these are my steps, okay? So when I'm looking at this particular problem, uh, what I'm thinking about right off the bat is that I have fractions, okay? So you, you might have been thinking the same thing. And there's a couple different ways, again, you could do this. Uh, we have 2x plus 5. That's the numerator, and then 3 is the denominator, okay? So this is a fraction. Kind of more technically speaking, we would call this a rational expression or a rational equation. And uh, those are equations in algebra that are effectively you know, are um, uh, fractional equations, okay? And anytime you see fractions with variables in them, you want to be thinking about that word rational, okay? Rational numbers, rational expressions, rational equations, etc. Okay, so we have uh, a fraction here, we have a number here, and we have another fraction here. Now, uh, I'm going to show you what I'm going to uh, uh, 
be doing here is my first step and the second you can actually see it right here but one thing you could have done is like okay i got four plus x plus five you could have combined these expressions added these two up that's that's fine you know you could have done that and the result of doing that is you could have constructed a uh, proportion and i'm not going to show you that but you could have done that and that's eh, perfectly fine okay however i'm going to kind of suggest to you that when you see rational uh expressions or, or equations excuse me <clears throat> rational um, equations um that you want to be thinking in terms of clearing all the fractions okay so you want to clear all the fractions first just so you can just get rid of the fractions and just kind of proceed from there so how do you clear the fractions well the first step is you need to identify the lowest common denominator so what are the denominators involved we have three okay that's a denominator here we have four but really we have one that's a denominator there and we have five so we need to identify the LCD uh, when we have fractions with denominators 3, 1, and 5. And, of course, that lowest common denominator would be 15. All right, so that's the first step. I'm going to call this my first step there, is that I'm going to identify the LCD of this rational equation. All right, so it's 15. So that's step one. Now, what is step two? Well, step two is... Once you know what the LCD is, okay, if we take that LCD and we multiply it by the entire equation, the effect of doing that is we are going to clear the fractions, all the fractions in the equation, and that's really kind of the best thing you want to do, okay? Just want to get away from dealing with fractions, so deal with them right up front, get that LCD and multiply it by the entire equation, all the terms left and right-hand side of the equation, and then you will, the result is, if you did this right, you will have cleared the fraction. So this is my second main step. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So here is 15. That's the LCD. And I'm going to uh, kind of write it out this way. I'm going to take 15 and multiply it by the entire equation. So I'm going to take this 15, multiply it by this. Okay. It's always kind of, you want to be thinking about the distributive property. 15 times 4, and then 15 times x plus 5. Now, if you kind of follow along with me, and you're like, oh, okay, I understand what's going on, and you think you could do the rest of this prom, then you, know, you should pause the video and just follow through and see if you can actually finish out the prom. I already showed you what the correct answer is, because, you know, just because you understand the concepts I'm talking about doesn't necessarily mean that you can, you know, kind of write out the uh, all the correct steps. Okay, you'll see what I'm talking about here. Actually, let me just go and show you it right now. Okay, so right here uh, is um, kind of the uh, all the uh, the mathematics involved in, in seeing 15 or LCD being multiplied by the equation. So before we do this, before we take this 15 and just start multiplying, what you want to do is look at each denominator. Okay, so here we have three, and here we have 15. So don't don't just um, multiply 15 times this. Say, okay, here's a denominator. You have to look at these things one by one. Three goes into 15 how many times? Five, all right? So instead of taking 15 and multiply by that over three, just think about, okay, how many times does three go into 15? That's five. So our uh, remaining expression is gonna be five times two X plus five, all right? So hopefully you understand that. So five times two X plus five, make sure you have this in parentheses. That's the um, uh, first kind of step of taking our LCD and multiplying by this first term, the left-hand side of the equation. Okay, so now, we're, of course, we'll clean this up here in a second. Now let's go to continue. Now we have 15. And here, uh, this is 4, 4 over 1. So 1 goes into 15, obviously 15 times. So 15 times 4, of course, is 60. Okay? And then we're going to have 15. We're going to multiply by this x plus 5. But before we do that, we have this denominator. We're going to say, oh, 5 goes into 15 how many times? All right, well, 5 goes into 15 three times. This is going to be 3 times x or 3x. Now, if you need to kind of actually write this out, I'm like, okay, that was confusing, and just take this 15, 15 over 1, and you multiply it by x over 5, and you kind of go, all right, that's 15x, numerator times numerator, over denominator times denominator, denominator, excuse me, that's 5, so 5 goes to 15, that's 3x, that's fine. But you, you need to kind of, you know, be able to kind of look at the problem here because I, you're really going to be doing a lot of extra writing when you're solving the your equations and kind of making your uh, uh, your paper, if you will, um, 
filled up with a lot of stuff that you shouldn't, um, that you want to refrain from, okay, because you kind of make uh, your work confusing. Now, you could put this off to the side, like on a scrap piece of scrap paper, but again, you know, all this comes from practice, all right? So before you start multiplying, just kind of, you know, look, okay, 5 goes to 15, 3, and of course, it takes, the, you know, the mental discipline to do each one of these multiplications one by one. Okay, so once you're satisfied that you did this right, I'm like, okay, that's right. 5 times 2x plus 5. All right, 15 times 4 is 60. 5 goes into 15, 3. 3 3x, boom. Okay, so you feel good about this step. So now we're going to go ahead and just clean this up by using the distributor property. So 5 times 2x plus 5, we've got to clean this up. That's going to be 5 times 2x, 10x. And then 5 times 5 is 25. And so the resulting equation is this. All right, so this is the result of step 2. So step two was to take that LCD and multiply by the entire equation to clear the fractions, and we end up with this equation. Okay, of course it's this equation as well, but we'll, um, we'll take that additional step and um, you know clear this this part of the equation up by using the distributive property. All right, so what is the last step? Well, you can see this right here. The last step is we want to solve the remaining equation. So basically, we took that rational equation and uh, kind of rewrote it in this manner, uh, 10x uh, plus 25 is equal to 60 plus uh, uh, 3x. So we're going to go ahead and solve this equation now instead of that original equation. And again, the benefit of doing this is that we don't have to deal with fractions. So let's go ahead and solve this last remaining equation. So the first thing is I'm going to move all the numbers on the right and then all my variable terms on the left-hand side. doesn't make a difference if you move the numbers first or the variables first. So here I'm going to move this 25 to the other side of the equation. I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides of the equation. And when I do this, you can just add down in a column manner. So 10x plus nothing is 10x. Uh, positive 25 minus 25 is 0. 60 minus 25 is 35. 3x plus nothing is 3x. Now we're going to move all the variable terms to the left-hand side. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides of the equation, just like this. I'm going to add down. So 10x minus 3x is positive 7x. 35 plus nothing is a positive 35. And then the 3x's here go away. Now you could be counting these as individual steps, right? If you're like, hey, hey, Mr. U2 math man, you told me how many steps you know, you're missing steps here. Well, yes, yeah, you, I would, I would say that's a fair, you know, comment to make, but I did tell you in the beginning of this video that I wanted you to kind of organize, um, your steps into two, like groups, if you will, right? Like what are the main steps? So the main step here is that we're solving this last remaining equation. And of course there are sub steps to do this, but let's go and finish up. So we have seven X is equal to 35. So to solve for X, we need to divide both sides of the equation by 7, so x is equal to 5. Now, um, a little technical thing here. Okay, This is the solution to the equation. And one technical thing is the following, a technical comment. Okay, Let's go back up here, and let's go to this step, Okay, the LCD. Okay, Now, we took the LCD, and we multiplied by the equation to clear fractions. Now, what we did was multiply the entire equation by a number value, okay? So 15 was LCD, we multiplied it um, by the entire equation. Now, if the LCD was um, a uh, some sort of variable uh, situation, so let's, uh, let's kind of change this up. What if I had like uh, 3x uh, maybe down here, um, you know, in my denominator, so my LCD is, involves a variable, if you are multiplying your enti the entire equation by something with a variable, and let's say I have 15x, that's a whole different situation, okay? But, well, it is, but it isn't, right? <laughs> You're probably confused with that. What I'm saying is the following. If your LCD involves a variable term, an x, a y, doesn't make a difference, you still follow these steps. However, what happens is the result of doing that um, is you could um, introduce what we call extraneous solutions. This is a huge, huge concept in algebra. Okay, so it's the same step, okay, but if you're multiplying the entire equation with something in a variable, you could be introducing something called, again, extraneous or extra solutions. And the only way you can determine if, in fact, that uh, you have an extra solution, which would not be the solution to the original equation, is you have to take your solution, like in this case, x is equal to 5, and plug it back in 
to the original equation. Okay, of course, the original equation uh, is the following. And then we would go ahead and see if it actually, you know, works. Okay, you're going to check uh, each solution. That is a required step. Now, a lot of students forget that step and they end up paying the price on tests and quizzes. So, again, you know, when you're approaching a problem like this, you know, the whole, you know, uh, you know, essence of this video is to think about the steps you're going to take more like the organization, like what is the main process, okay? Not all the tiny little sub-steps, because all these sub-steps here that I'm taking is really kind of the habits and, you know, the kind of procedures that you learn in more basic algebra, like solving linear equations. But when you get to something like this, where we're uh, dealing with a rational equation, you want to be thinking about kind of big picture procedure. And it's the same thing, too, with linear equations. So, Anyways, I um, you know hope that this video was at least you know made you think about organizing you know the kind of main activities that you need to take to solve an equation, and it's going to be different depending on what type of equation you're dealing with in algebra. Now, if you need um, help with algebra and solving equations, depending on what level you're at, check out either my pre-algebra or algebra one course. Also, I have additional uh, videos on my YouTube channel. Matter of fact, I have a couple, close to, I believe, a couple thousand videos after 10 plus years on YouTube, which it's been awesome for me because I love to teach math. So believe me when I tell you, I have a lot of content, uh, content on my channel on all topics mathematics. So, you know, go through that stuff. That's going to really help you out with, but uh, whether it's my videos or someone else's videos or another textbook, it doesn't make a difference. Make sure you correct whatever you don't understand. Because if you know you don't understand something and you're trying to uh, truly learn mathematics, if you don't address that, then you're going to kind of keep repeating that error over and over again, okay? All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.